Hello and welcome back to the channel. I'm Tim, this is Daisy, and we are Holland Paws. The goal here is to kind of give a new RV transporter, or even RV transporters that have been doing it for a while, a couple of tips and tricks and things to make your life a little bit easier on the road. This one is a special episode. It's called Tips with Tim. I'm gonna give you a whole bunch of just little tips. Just random stuff that I thought of while I'm doing things. And I recorded a bunch of stuff and stuck it all together. And it's just a whole bunch of just little random tips. The first tip that I got for you today is kind of important. How much fuel do you have in your auxiliary tank? You can flash a flashlight down in there and kind of say, well, I got maybe a third or whatever. If you don't have a gauge on one of these, and a lot of them don't come with gauges, you can put a gauge on this. It was another $150, I think, to get a gauge for this, but I decided not to get it with the gauge. So how do I find out how much fuel is in this tank? Well, you need to know a couple of things. You need to know the width and the depth of your tank. So mine is 57 inches that way, and it's 19 inches this way. Then you just use your standard dipstick. Now it's better to use a wooden yardstick because it's already got measurements on it. For some reason, I can't, I took the yardstick out of here and I can't find it. I think it's buried somewhere over there underneath a whole bunch of old Christmas boxes or something, but I can't figure out where it's at. So you take your yardstick and you run it down in there till it hits the bottom make sure your truck's on a pretty level surface then you pull your dipstick out and you see how much fuel you have in there so you can measure how much fuel so I've got about two and a half inches of fuel in there but let's say that I had eight inches of fuel in here so how much fuel do I actually have the formula is pretty easy it's length times width times height divided by 231. Now why 231? Well, there are 231 cubic inches in a gallon of diesel fuel. So if I had eight inches of fuel in here, it would be 57 times 19 times eight divided by 231. And that tells me I have 37 and a half gallons of fuel in this tank. So it's a better way to estimate how much fuel you have rather than just looking down in there and going well I got about yay much or about a third or about a quarter it gives you pretty exact how many gallons you have provided that you're on a level surface okay so the next tip that I have for you has to do with the hitch this hitch can be kind of expensive and it's really easy to steal so we want to secure it now again locks are only to keep an honest man honest, but still, we don't want to make it easy for someone to steal this. So they do make these things where you unlock them and then they pop off, but it's a locking pin that goes through there. But these things suck. They always seize up. I have already helped three transporters now cut these off of their trucks so they could swap their ball out to put a smaller ball on with the regular hitch so they can take some lighter loads. But these things always rust up and seize up. And it doesn't matter how often you take it apart and lube it and all that stuff, they eventually will rust because you'll just forget about them and they just don't work real great. Uh, you can spend a lot of money on these things or a little bit of money on these things, but they're not the greatest thing in the world. I keep one in my uh, hitch bag just kind of as a spare in case I need something. Uh, for some reason, I've never had to use it. This is brand new. It's never been in the truck. It just sits in my bag forever and ever and ever. But there is something that you can do that's almost free. Take your pin. Because you know you can take these things out that fast and then somebody can steal your hitch. But what you can do is take your pin and this little hole, drill it out. All you have to do is just take a regular drill, put it in a vise, and drill a hole through it. 
And what you end up with is something that looks like this. It's got a bigger hole in it. And then you just take a lock, any lock that you have, put it through there, and lock it. So that's how I roll. Take my pin, stick the pin through there. And then I take my lock, put it through there. And I lock it up. It's that easy. Now, these locks can seize up. So what I do is I fill them full of gel anti-seize or lubricant. It's a, it comes in a little can, small can. It's only about this tall. And it's a gel lubricant with a nozzle, kind of like WD-40, but not. And you stick it in there and you, and you fill it full of that. You can also fill it full of lockies. It doesn't last as long as the gel stuff. Um, and if the lock seizes up and you have some problems with it, all you have to do is eventually get it out. You can spray it full of penetrating oil or whatever. If you forget to maintain this, then you can take it apart and just put it in a little cup of transmission fluid, automatic transmission fluid. And it'll penetrate all inside there and lube everything up and it'll never uh, be seized up on you. This one's never seized up on me. The worst I've had was when I didn't drill this hole big enough and it seized in that hole. The lock always comes undone, but it seized up in that hole. So I just had to wiggle it back and forth a little bit and then it popped out. But I've never had a problem with the locks seizing up. But that's another tip on how to secure your stuff. So the next tip I have has to do with safety. Inside the bed right here, on the passenger side, make sure it's on the passenger side, not the driver's side. The driver's side is going to be on the traffic side. So if you break down and have to pull off the road, you want to get out of the driver's side, walk around the front of the vehicle, and come to the passenger side so you're not on the traffic side of everything. But inside here, magnetized, I have two of these. You can buy these at Harbor Freight for pretty cheap in a pack of two. And then you just push a button and you can magnet them. If you got a problem. Really easy to do. Yeah, you're going to have your four ways on, but let's say your alternator went out. And now you don't have any lights. Having a set of these is going to help you on the side of the road. I always travel with these. All right, here's another tip. This is the, the heater that you can buy at the truck stop. You can buy these pans for, I think they're like $4 for three of them or something like that, but they're not cheap. You can buy these at the dollar store and you can get a bunch of them for a dollar and they're way cheaper. But fill them up with food like chicken carbonara and mastacholi and all these other things, wrap them up and freeze them. Then you put them in your cooler. And then as they thaw out, you take them out and the whole little thing fits in there. And then you warm them up. And then you have fresh food from home on the road. Here's another tip. You got limited room in your toolbox. Take these things. I know they look all sexy when they're like that, but take them out of there and put them in a plastic bag. So that they're like this you can still tell that those are all metric and those are all standard but they fit in a toolbox a whole lot better and you can pack more tools now granted i pack more tools than most people but that's how i save space i hope these tips help some of you out if they did consider subscribing to the channel or at least click the little like button down there or leave a comment. If you've got some slick tips, then leave them in the comments and maybe I'll do, uh, I'll add those to the next video that I do with all the tips and tricks and things like that. Because I come up with these things or I think of these things all the time, but they're not really enough to make a video out of for just one thing, like how to keep your stuff dry in a cooler. But anyway, thanks for watching. And as always, have safe travels and I hope to see you on the road.